Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll try to be brief in the presentation to leave some, some more time for questions in the end. Uh, in any case, you have my contact. If there are some more questions in the, in the end, we can you can contact me directly. So um, today the topic is to speak about calcining clay. Um, just a brief introduction about the company. So FCT is an Australian company. We have offices in different parts of the world. Our headquarters is in Australia. Uh, we have offices in Turkey, Austria, US and Brazil. The company was founded in 80, uh, 1985 and we have more than 1000 references in different industries, being more than 300 in cement alone. Um, the company has three main uh, branches. One is FCT Flames, where we are uh, doing a special flame effects for Olympic Games, for example. Another part of the company is FCT Arctec, in which we are making analytic, analytic equipment for uh, XRD, XRF equipment for clinker, for cement, and so on. And FCT Combustion, uh, that is obviously dealing with combustion, and this is what we will speak about today. Um, as FCT Combustion, we are able to help cement plants in different areas of the plant since the preparation of the raw material, fuels, uh, combustion, as well as the, the, the cement production. Uh, and today we will focus on our uh, technologies for clay calcination. Just as a little bit of background, um, so obviously uh, we all know that CO2 is part of uh, greenhouse uh, gases. And the cement production is responsible for 8% of the emissions of CO2 um, uh, in the world. We can see two charts here uh, showing uh, just how this has grown very much in the last years. Um, since 2016, 17, this starts to stabilize a little bit um, due to the, to, the, to the actions that the governments are doing. And more and more we see that the the policies from the governments, uh, European Union or US or everywhere in the world really, are getting more and more strict towards uh, greenhouse um, gases. Uh, we have different ways to reduce CO2, uh, CO2 emission from, from cement production. And one of them is to, uh, to replace the clinker in the cement production by other, other um, active materials for example we have here a picture with some examples we could use fly ash we could use lag and so on but we can see that in the recent years the availability and the price the availability of fly ash and lag is reducing um, and the price obviously is also increasing so another way to 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 replace clinker is to use another cementitious materials like for example the calcined clay no? Uh, the calcined clay can be from um, natural sources if if you are lucky or i'm not sure if lucky is the real word word but if you're lucky enough to live near a volcanic area so you should have availability to to natural um, uh, calcined clays or in case you are not um, you don't have availability to natural calcined clays you can obviously produce uh, yourself uh, I think the main goals with calcine, calcined clays or any other cementitious material uh, would be obviously to, to find a, so, um, an alternative for uh, clinker in a more environmentally friendly way. Obviously, we also, uh, apart from the environment, we also should uh, look into the costs no? uh, in terms of fuel uh, consumption, in terms of operating costs, as well as the capital cost that you need to, to invest to have this plant running. And obviously, we, we don't want to have an extremely difficult operation. So the operation of this, this cementitious material production should be as easy as possible. Uh, speaking still about the, the supplementary cementitious material, um, now speaking more specifically about calcined clays, which can also be called pozzolan. Uh, this is basically a silico aluminous material that, has, um, that can react with calcium hydroxide when combined with water, and this gives hydraulic binding characteristics similar to the clinker. 
We can see here a, uh, a diagram showing uh, the composition of different materials in terms of calcium, silica, and aluminate oxides. And we can see uh, clinker, uh, uh, Portland cement is here on the, on the left um, bottom part, and the pozzolan is on the top right part. And we can see the other materials that we discussed before, so slag, uh, fly ash, and so on. So basically, we want to replace the clinker with something, uh, in this case, pozzolan, that is basically a combination of silica and alumina um, activated by uh, when subjected to heat. So you can uh, activate it, removing the hydroxyl from, from, the, from the structure. And this, this causes the clay to become um, active. I think there are different uh, possibilities to make this calculation that I have on the screen, but it's just as an example to show uh, two benefits of using uh, pozzolan. One on the top side would be the amount of CO2 produced. So if we compare um, a normal uh, Portland cement on the top with a cement produced with 40% pozzolan, obviously different countries have different um, legislations about um, pozzolan cement. Some countries allow more use of, of pozzolan, some countries allow less use of pozzolan, but just as a reference, if we use a 40% pozzolan cement, we would have a reduction of around 30% in the CO2 emissions coming, coming from the material, né? because as I mentioned uh, from the clays, we are just removing the OH, so the hydroxyl from the, from the material and not the CO2 as we do with clinker. So we would achieve a reduction of around 30% CO2 emissions coming from the material. Um, obviously, obviously, there is a reduction as well in the CO2 from the combustion because the specific consumption of uh, to produce pozzolan is much lower than producing clinker. So we also use less fuel for the same amount of material produced. And this means also a reduction in the CO2 emissions because, uh, coming from the combustion. And as well, there's a, a benefit in terms of um, in terms of costs, fuel costs, because as mentioned, the uh, specific consumption is much lower. Uh, we can, if we consider a plant producing 1.4 million tons of cement per year with an average 25% pozzolan um, substitution, uh, we would have around 18,000 tons of coal per year. Uh, reduced from, from the production of clinker uh, compared to the production of pozzolan. No? So there are both very uh, reasonable benefits in terms of CO2 emissions and fuel costs. Uh, clays, um, fortunately, clays are a very common material in the, on, the, on the planet, so they are very well distributed around the whole globe, uh, different compositions, different uh, uh, clay uh, qualities, but they are available everywhere. Um, so here, uh, coming back to, to what I, I mentioned before, so basically uh, we want to achieve the activity of this, this clay uh, heating it up between 600 to 900 degrees, which is a much lower temperature than necessary for clinkerization, right? Um, and from the different types of Calcinated clay, we have the kaolinitic, kaolinitic clay as the most appropriate to produce uh, pozzolans. So basically what is happening is this equation here. So we are removing the hydro hydroxyl from the, from, the, from the crystal and creating an amorphous um, phase that later on when ground and mixed with water uh, becomes a hydraulic bounding. Eh? When we look to different clays, we can make a thermogravimetric or a differential scanning calorimetric analysis, and this would produce us a chart like this. Basically, what it's telling us is how much uh, mass the sample is losing uh, with the temperature. So here we have an example. Uh, we start heating the, the, the sample. Uh, around 100 degrees, we, we start losing the, evapor uh, the moisture. After that, depending on the type of clay, um, in this case here between 400 and 750 degrees is the, is the temperature where we are really activating the clay. So we are, we are removing the hydroxyl and, and um, making the matrix to become amorphous. 
But if we continue hitting this, this sample, we go back into a recrystallization uh, at higher temperatures, in this case around 850, 900 degrees. And this is not good because then uh, when we recrystallize the material, you lose part of the reactivity. So we want to stay between the clay activation phase and the crystallization phase. So we want to have the, the, the clay prepared until a certain temperature before the, uh, the recrystallization. Um, again, the treatment types of clay, kaolinite, light, and Montmorillonite, light, um, they have different activation temperatures. They have different crystallization uh, temperatures. Uh, we have here uh, some, some, uh, some diagrams about the, the structure. But if we look to the next chart, I think is more uh, representative. So here we have, for the three different main types of clays, we have the activation temperature in, inside the red boxes and the recrystallization temperatures on the right side. And so we can see that from kaolinite, the, the activation and the crystallization are very far from each other. But when we come to elite and Montmorillonite, light, uh, we, these temperatures are coming closer and closer together, which makes a little bit more difficult to, to keep into the, the proper range of temperatures and increases the risk of a recrystallization, which would reduce the um, activity, the, the reactivity of the, of the material. So basically, when we are speaking about activation of clay, we have to take care about three main components, uh, three main factors. One would be the optimum calcination temperature. As we said, we want to pass the, the activation, but we don't want to, to recrystallize uh, the material. The crystallinity and the mineralogical component, the composition of the clay. No? These are the ma three main factors. Uh, one point that should be discussed as well is that um, clays, they have, uh, they have iron in their composition and the iron can, depending on how it's prepared, can, can cause some uh, color issues. The color itself has no influence on the resistance of the material, but uh, it can have some psychological influence that um, um, pinkish, uh, reddish uh, cement is perceived as not uh, very resistant, which is just a perception issue, but still can prevent someone to, to sell cement, right? So basically when we are heating and activating the clay, we, uh, we, most of the iron is in the form of magnetite because of the higher temperatures. And the problem is when we are cooling the material, the magnetite goes back to hematite. And hematite would be the brownish color and magnetite would be the, the, the gray color. And we want to keep as much as magnetite as possible. Um, this problem starts happening with iron levels above four or 5% in the, in the clay. Below this, we don't really see problems with color. Uh, but when you have more iron than that, you should take care of it. And there are two different ways mainly. One is controlling the atmosphere during cooling, uh, basically the oxygen content. So you can have a reduction zone near to the cooling phase. And uh, another way would be uh, with a chemical control with a mineral addition. And this we can discuss uh, more in details case by case. Um, FCT, uh, we are in a reasonably good position because we are able to offer two different technologies for clay calcination, uh, which depends on each specific case. I think there is no uh, real um, one fits all solution. Um, and our, I think, main advantage is that we as we can offer both solutions, both technologies, we can have an open and, and honest discussion with the client to find what is the best for his case. Now, we, we don't need to push for this solution or for this solution because we can offer both. So the, the two solutions that we are speaking about would be the flash calciner and the rotary kiln. No? Speaking a little bit about the flash calciner, basically, this is similar to a pre-calciner uh, a precalcination tower in a, in a normal clinker kiln. So we have a, um, a set of cyclones that are used as preheat, to preheat the clay, to calcine the clay, and to cool the clay later on with a calciner on it. The calciner would be the only part that is, um, that is lined internally with refractory. All the rest is metallic. This means that it's a very uh, fast um, 
startup procedure. So you, you start, you only need to hit a little bit uh, some of the parts and then you can start producing already because the thermal inertia of the system is very low. As there are no moving parts, the maintenance uh, is, is very reduced. The, the structure for carrying loads is also reduced and so on. And one of the main advantages of the flash calcine is that you can control very precisely the temperature range that you are working as you are controlling a normal um, calciner in a clinker tune, right? So you, you can control and you can react very fast uh, in the calcination temperature. Um, one point is that uh, to, to the material that is fed to, to the flash calciner has to be ground. So um, it has to be a fine material. So you have to grind the material before the calcination. Um, and uh, we can use different types of mills. It depends a lot on the source of your clay because some clays are already fine enough. They are just agglomerated together. So you just need to dry them. Uh, in that case, a, a, a mill would not be necessary, just a dryer. Um, so, but this, as I mentioned, uh, depends on case by case. And with the flash calciner, you can um, also connect a hot gas generator to produce the, the to, to be acting as the hot heat source for the system. And with this gas, hot gas generator, there are different technologies and you can use every type of fuel. Uh, natural gas, all the, all the conventional fuels, natural gas, fuel oil, pulverized coal, pet coke, or you can go for more unconventional materials or alternative fuels uh, like lumpy coal, so you don't need to grind the coal to, to use it, or biomass, different alternative fuels. Uh, in FCT, we are able to, um, to offer four different standard size units from five to 40 tons per hour, and we have two pilot plants working one in Europe, one in South America for, for uh, industrial trials. When we speak about the rotary kiln, uh, I think there is not, uh, we don't need to go so much in details because it's a uh, rotary kiln like the one producing clinker. Uh, the main advantage of this is that most, most likely the groups or the plants have uh, old uh, clinker kiln that's not used that can be converted to to uh, calcining clay um, and this is um, I think everybody knows very well how this works no? so I don't need to 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 go so much into details um, I think we to compare one system to the other uh, as mentioned before it has to be compared on plant to plant case to case basis because of uh, availability of clay, which type of clay you have, or how uh, fine is the clay already, um, and so on. Uh, costs of fuels on each plant, and this um, we, can, we can do such, such um, studies. And in the end, we can come with a, so FCT can help to implement the calcining clay from the beginning, since the, the conceptual phase or feasibility study until the end, um, delivering the product and, and following the production. So a big question is which one should I use, the flash or rotary kiln? Here there are some just bullet points about the, the benefits of each one of them. So in the flash calciner on the left, uh, we can see that because of the better temperature control, we can achieve a, a higher pozzolanic activity. Uh, we don't need to, to grind the the material produced in the flash calciner, but we need to grind it before. Um, the start and operation is very easy and fast. Um, the fuel consumption is a little bit lower than the rotary kiln because of the uh, lower amount of surfaces, hot surfaces exposed to ambient. Uh, the costs, the maintenance costs are a bit lower as well because of moving parts mainly. Um, the overall electrical consumption is a little bit lower. And depending on which equipment you have on site or not available for, for the operation, one solution or the other can be um, can achieve a faster return on investment. On the rotary kiln, obviously there is also some benefits. Rotary kiln is a much much more forgiving equipment, so you can it's less sensitive to to the raw material that you are using, and you can use different types of raw of input materials in 
in terms of quality and in terms of sizes. Now you don't need to grind before uh, into a fine powder as you need for the flash call center. However, you need to grind later to produce the cement. So it's a trade-off and each case needs to be individually studied. Uh, secondary air has a low temperature compared to clinker kiln, so you need a, a good flame stability because of that, which could limit your amount of alternative fuels to be used. Um, and in the flash call center, you can have a separate hot gas generator for that, so would allow you to have more alternative fuels. But one big advantage of the rotary kiln is that, as mentioned, most of the plants have already most of the equipment necessary. So you could um, uh, you could modify an existing clinker kiln to operate as a clay calcining kiln with a very small effort. You know? Basically, uh, I'm coming already to the end of the presentation, hopefully. Uh, basically, to start some, some new project to, to prepare an offer, we would divide this in two phases. First of all, uh, we would like to have some samples of the material to prepare some some uh, tests to to find out exactly what are the characteristics of the mat of the clay that each plant has available to to use and this is one of the most important uh, steps because this will dictate which kind of equipment should be used which kind of transportation system dryer no dryer um, grinding no grinding which kind of, this would be the basis for the whole um, project later on. So the phase one is, is very important. And then the phase two would be a more detailed uh, study to, to really define which equipment should be used. Um, in the end of this phase two, it would even come to, to a very refined capex um, to, to be presented to the plant. And later on, um, we would start really the project now. Uh, just a quick word on why FCT, why we should, FCT is in a good place to, to, to offer such, such projects. First of all, because our team, uh, the people that we have on board uh, participated on 12 Pozzolan projects already. Uh, our first, uh, the first project that our people was involved was in the 80s even. So we are talking about 40 years that uh, our people have, have contact to, to this. Uh, we can do the whole process from the beginning, uh, from the quality tests uh, until the end of the project. Uh, most of our people are coming from, from cement plants, so we know what is which kind of quality and, and the requisites are necessary. And as I said, we are also able to produce, uh, to, to offer both options, so we are not biased to force uh, a solution into a flash calciner or into a rotary kiln because we are uh, we have an impartial view uh, so we don't need to force the client in any direction right and to to finish the presentation i think we we achieved the time um, basically there is no uh, solution that fits to every case so i think there are different um, options in the market different possibilities of technologies and each plant has to have a proper study to see what fits better to their case. Um, each solution has their trade-offs and we need to balance that to see, to, to decide um, a solution. And I think there are some, uh, some challenges to produce calcining clay, but uh, FCT is in a good place to help the clients to first find those challenges and how to react to them. This was basically the presentation. You have my email uh, here. So if later on you are thinking about the topic and you want to, to ask some questions or feel free to contact me. So this was does it for now and I'm open for, for questions if you have any. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Joel, uh, for a very interesting presentation. Certainly one that I'll be going back to, uh, to have another look at. Um, you've introduced us to a whole new world I think we just have time for one quick question and uh, this is going to be from Ibrahim Abu Awad um, and he asked what if the clay that you want to calcine contains high levels of chloride is that a problem uh, yes this can be a problem as uh, 
any source of chloride in the cement process no? uh, and you should uh, there are different ways to remove the chloride you can uh, for example now we are speaking about a project uh, with um, clay that is removed from from a port so from from the bottom of the sea and this could have uh, a lot of, of chloride so you have to take care of it we need to discuss specifically but you can wash the clay before or, or other methods but yes you have to take care of of the of the chloride content yes okay fantastic a, Joel, we, we had questions also from uh, Vaktang uh, Chiedzi